The opinions expressed in the video you are about to see are solely those of BoatTest.com and its test captain. Captain Rob Smith with BoatTest.com on board the 34 Express from Rampage. Rampage has a deep heritage in fishing. And we're going to show you some of the reasons that Rampage sets itself apart from the rest. We have the opportunity right behind me to look at one that doesn't have the interior finished yet. You'll see some of those key things that make it different. Rampage's 33 from years ago has grown up. Now she's the 34 Express for 2009. The 34 Express modified V-Hull features a sharp bow entry forward with 18 degrees of dead rise at the stern for sea keeping ability that keeps you dry out on the blue water. Stringer systems are foam that is glassed into the hull to make a rigid unitized piece. The gel coat finish is VOC isophallic gel and the 34 Express also has a barrier coat to help prevent blisters and other osmotic failures. All this auto construction comes with a five year structural hull warranty. One of the things that makes a big difference is the way the boat is set up. Rampage allows you to have a lot of flexibility in how you want to set the boat up. What makes sense to you may not make sense to me. That sets them apart. Let's take a look at some of the details here in this cockpit before we move on. With about 70 square feet of cockpit space, you can really do a lot of personalization to fit your type of fishing. There's a five foot long fish box with macerator pump out in the sole, and it has a large gutter system to keep water out of the bilges. The deck has a one half inch reinforced aluminum plate so you can add a fighting chair. You can also opt for a transom fold away bench seat. Another option is a live well unit that maintains access to the stern and has tow kick space too. Gunnel tops have six rod holders and hawsers to maintain order and below the gunnels are rod racks for storage. Bolsters are all removable. Flexibility, durability, and functionality to me are key to any boat, especially when it comes to a fish boat. I want to start back here in the cockpit and show you a few things that really make a difference. This morning I had this boat out backing down at five miles an hour. That means there's a lot of water hitting the back of the boat. So there's a couple of things I wanted to look at immediately. I'll show you. There wasn't a drop of water around the transom door. The latch was a bit hard to reach, but the gasket and hardware did their job well. There are three large cuppers that took any water that came in right out. The good design here means they're not likely to get clogged. This whole section is modular. In this case, they've got an additional live well, set up very much like the one in the stern wall. Rounded, blue, very deep, has a macerator pump in it. But then, the serious fisherman is going to have to have ice, and this one's got the frigid rigid system. Now, what I've seen is some people will go with two of the frigid rigid systems rather than having an extra bait well. The 34 Express opens wide, lifting the helm deck up for access to the engines. Whether it was the CAT C7 A certs or the Volvo Penta IPS, I was able to maneuver around and reach most anything I needed to. Obviously, the outboard sides of the engines were a little more difficult to reach. Everything was well labeled and organized. When you're heading out offshore, heading out to the canyons, you're going to spend a lot of time in the cockpit working at the helm, walking around the helm. So the helm station itself becomes very important. You need to have a chair that's completely adjustable, both sliding, swiveling, and height adjustable, and this one is. The one thing I see a lot of people cut out, though, is the ability to get around this helm chair from any direction. You don't have people that are working back up here with you, and you want them to be able to get by without you having to get out of your chair, move it forward, let them in, and then let them back out when they need to get back out. The windshield has three wipers for good visibility, even in a downpour. Visibility was only broken up by the bracing for the hard top. The helm has a space of 34 inches by 13 inches for electronics. With the Volvo Penta IPS system, you have a Murphy display. Steering is hydraulic with Edson stainless steel wheel with comfort grip and speed control knob. When you're ready to add your electronics, access couldn't get much easier than this. Pull two pins and it tips forward. Everything is coated for corrosion protection and labeled well. The port bench has a cooler storage compartment under it. The forward end of the bench has a chair that swivels to either face the helm or to face forward. There's also plenty of grab rails in this corner if the seas get a little rough. The tower system is something that a lot of people want to have a little choice in. So what they've done with Rampage is they've set this up. This one's got a hard top on it and it's ready to accept the tower that you want. You tell your dealer what you want, they make sure it gets installed. I'm taking a look at this and I was out offshore going out toward the uh, metal grounds here in the Gulf of Mexico. Went up front. I really appreciate this. This has hit me right above my knee. I'll get to take measure and measure that shortly but this is a very thick rail, so I can lean into this and count on it holding me rather than failing and sending me overboard. 
Rampage has a polished stainless steel pulpit anchor roller assembly and you can opt for a Maxwell RC800 windlass with fortress anchor, chain and 300 feet of line. The entry door to the head is cherry matching the wood of the cabinetry. The vanity has solid surface countertop and stainless steel sink. The head is a sealand with internal macerator. Inside the shower you have four vertical rod holder racks to keep your most expensive gear safe. There's 74 to 76 inches overhead clearance in the head. The 2009 Rampage 34 Express measures 35 feet 6 inches or 10.85 meters in length on average with integrated pulpit and sports a beam of 13 feet or 3.96 meters. Approximate weight with diesels is 17,200 pounds or about 7,800 kilos and with gas engines it's 16,200 pounds and about 7,348 kilos. Maximum draft is measured at 29 inches and dead rise is 18 degrees at the transom. Tankage is 367 gallons, just under 1,389 liters of fuel, and 60 gallons or 227 liters of fresh water. With the exception of engines and controls and a hardtop option, both test boats are the same. This Volvo Penta IPS version with its new Sportfish mode was rushed out for testing without an interior, so they weighted it down with concrete and some lead to meet the same distributed weight as a completed version. On test day, the waters were not very challenging other than threading our way through a lot of morning fishermen in small boats. The 34 Express easily navigated these waters, slicing nice tight turns typical of IPS controlled boats. With twin 370 horsepower Volvo Penta IPS 500 diesels, she's on plane in 5.8 seconds and passing through 30 miles an hour in 8.5. Her top speed is 41.5 miles per hour or 36.1 knots at 3600 RPM. Most economical speed was 24.2 miles per hour or 21 knots at 2500 RPM which produced a burn rate of 18.4 gallons per hour or 69.6 .6 liters per hour and a range of 434 miles or 378 nautical miles on a full tank. The devil's in the details. The boat's got to be flexible, durable, and functional. And Rampage has covered every one of those as you've just seen. With the IPS system with the sport fish mode, I don't believe you can have more fun with that. It worked so well, I was super impressed and you will be too. So be sure and take a look at the Rampage 34 Express.